From Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, Fox Sports Net presents the Pac-10 Conference Football Game of the Week. Tonight, it's the 18th rated team in the nation, the Washington Huskies and the number eight Arizona State Sun Devils. And hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is former Pac-10 UCLA quarterback Tom Ramsey. And what a great show we have for you in game two of our Pac-10 doubleheader. It is Arizona State and Washington. And the last three times these two teams have opened the season, the winner has gone on to either win or share the conference championship. So this could be an absolutely great show. Two great teams, two great programs. Over the last three years alone, Arizona State and Washington post the best records in the Pac-10. Each team's lost a lot of key veterans, but they have a lot of good young players to fill. And they have two great quarterbacks, two of the best in the country, and Brock Heward and Ryan Keeley, who has the edge. Brock Heward, a wonderful veteran quarterback for Washington. He can make all the throws, and as Ryan Keeley, he can pull and improvise as good as anybody in the conference. But Keeley has something that Heward does not have, and that is number 21, J.R. Redmond. J.R. Redmond, one of the top all-purpose players in the nation, a Heisman Trophy candidate. We're going to see him on defense tonight he'll be all over the place and the last two times that these teams got together two years ago in Tempe 87 points were scored and Arizona State won by three it is the Sun Devils and it is the Huskies and right now let's go down in the field and bring on those Devils Welcome back to a sold-out Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. One of those down below is the third member of our broadcast team, former All-Pro lineman Jackie Slater. Thanks a lot, guys, and it looks like we're going to have a beautiful night of football here in Tempe, Arizona. The rain didn't come in like we were expecting. Now, if you think this game doesn't have major implication, you need do no more than talk to the two head coaches. I caught up with Bruce Snyder and Jim Lambright, and this is what they told me. If you lose this game, you chase the opponent. Uh, you start off on the bottom of the list in your conference, uh, as opposed to being able to start off on top and, and be able to use that as a confidence builder for your team for the next three, four weeks. There's a momentum change in your system, in your team, in your practices that uh, really drives you forward into your season. So I, I think it is key from that standpoint. The Washington Huskies could be in for a long night because Arizona State has won 10 of the last 12 opening games. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Jackie. And we are ready to kick off. Washington won the toss, wants to defer to the second half, so Jim Skursky will kick things off. He is from Seattle, Washington, and Skursky will be kicking off to J.R. Redmond. And also Hightower. There is J.R. Redmond, who averaged 21 and a half yards per return. His long was 47 yards, but he has the ability to go all the way. 4-4 four, four speed in the 40. And Skursky's kickoff is deep. It is taken by Redmond at the 8-yard line. A check that. It is Lindsey Jackson and Jackson back deep brings it back 32 yards all the way past the 35 yard line and let's bring out their quarterback Ryan Keeley the local kid from St. Mary's High School in Phoenix led his team to a state championship and threw for over 2100 yards last year now Gray Rugemer is their center and he goes 6 4 301 the backs and receivers J.R. Redmond is Mr. Everything, running back, wide receiver, kick returner, and at times a defensive back. Last year ran for 865 yards. And they will go to J.R. Redmond, and he sweeps the left side, runs past the 40-yard line, out near the 43. 
Defensively for Arizona State they lost a lot last year so they need a great season from Albury battle nine career sacks linebackers there's no pack pen defensive well, there we have Jabari Issa who's the nose tackle Mac to is also on that line and Marcus Harrison is the inside linebacker who is so swift in the interior Nigel Burton his job to mark number 21 right there J.R. Redmond. And Burton, when they split Redmond out, he has to cover him, and that is a tough responsibility for a strong safety. When you see right away Arizona State wanting to get the ball to J.R. Redmond to toss into the sideline, and then they come right back with a little short pass out of the backfield. Those are Redmond's rushing numbers last year, averaging over six yards per carry. In his career, he has only started one game. And this is an offense that has just about everybody back. Most of the losses came in the offensive line. Healy hands off to his fullback, and Jeff Polk smashes his way inside the 40-yard line. I think one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons Bruce Snyder did not want to start J.R. Redmond in the past, Mike Martin had, every time he started, they were winning games. So Bruce was uh, a little superstitious down there. Well, he was the national coach of the year in 1996 when he led Arizona State to the Rose Bowl. They went 11 and won that the year, but he also said in that season he had his most disappointing loss as a college coach, and that was to Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. So Redmond fires forward. It'll be third down and about five or six yards. Jabari Issa made the tackle. Last year he played defensive end, moving him inside, where they say he's at a more comfortable nose tackle position. And look at his size, 6'6", 295. And Issa, he'll slide around that front. Sometimes he's a nose tackle, sometimes he's a defensive tackle, but he just wreaks havoc in that interior of the line. So Keeley in a passing situation. Let's see if Washington blitzes. No, they rush four. And Keeley with plenty of time wins it, completes it. Lindsey Jackson first down at the 22-yard line. 17 yards in the play. Coverage by Nigel Burton and Jermaine Smith, but Keeley, who suffered a knee injury in the game that you covered last year, really looks comfortable. Yeah, nice safe call right here. Dan Cosetto, the offensive coordinator, gives Keeley a nice pocket to throw, and the offensive line does a nice job, and then he spins it out to his veteran receiver, Jackson. So Keeley has it inside the 25, and they'll run the reverse. This is Craig Spann. Big sideline. Span inside the 15 and near another first down before Smith brings him down. Craig Span, who Tom may be the fastest player on the team, not J.R. Redmond. Craig Span has suffered a knee injury as well, and not sure he could actually outrun all the guys, but I tell you what, right here he picks up some great blocks. They want to get the ball in his hands. He's a veteran wide receiver. And Keeley's out there throwing a block as well, but See Spahn, he could get up the field and get close to another first down. Well, right now, Arizona State is looking strong. They have taken that football from right around their 35-yard line, and they swing it to the big tight end, Kendrick Bates, and he is in for the touchdown. 13 yards, Keeley to Bates, and the Sun Devils are on the board. Looks so mature. He started last year as a redshirt freshman, taking over for the All-American Jake Plummer. And he has led his team on their first offensive possession in 98 to a touchdown, and he gets a 7-0 lead over the 18th-rated team in the nation, the Washington Huskies. Well, what I like about what they do, they get Keeley on the move where he's so effective on the run. He throws a nice ball to Kendrick Bates, and then he just bowls his way in right past Brendan Jones, the free safety. But you watch him. He has a couple guys to throw to. Matt Sircone, also the other tight end, dragging the backside of the end zone. But Bates, not to be denied. 
I think Keeley's a little excited, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> he threw for 15 touchdowns last year, and he gets a little knocked by Todd Johnson, the outside linebacker. There is Kendrick Bates, scored one touchdown last year, has his first already, and the opening drive of 98, and it went 61 yards in seven plays. stop Arizona State's brilliant offense. Yeah, one of the things you have to be concerned about, you want to take the crowd out of the game, and if they jump on you early and score points, it makes it awfully difficult for that offense. This is Stephen Baker. His brother John kicked here, and naturally they're from Bakersfield, California. Jawan Hooker, maybe the fastest player in college football. And it is Hooker, four yards deep, going to one knee. There is a flag down, and it is near the 35-yard line where they were kicking off, so it could be one of the Sun Devils offsides. Well, they will kick it again. Arizona State with a 7-0 lead. Bruce Snyder, he was impressed with the drive, 61 yards. But there's a gentleman who went nine and three last year, six and two in the Pac-10 conference, while Washington finished eight and four. That's a five-yard penalty and a re-kick. See how see how Washington comes out of the uh, huddle this time. They may show three wides right away, Steve. One thing you talked about yesterday I thought was very interesting after we talked with Jim Lambright and Bruce Snyder you said I can't believe how confident both of those coaches are. Well, you know you're looking at two of the veteran coaches in the conference they've seen it all. Lambright's 30th year up at Washington 24 years as an assistant six years as a head coach. He's been a player through the program a coach. And he was just joking with me before the game. He said, I don't make any of those important decisions. I let those other, my assistant coaches do that. Yeah, yeah. sure, coach. <laughs> well, here's the Sun Devils kicker. Stephen Baker kicking off to Hooker and Jarzinka. It is Joe Jarzinka from the two-yard line. And he'll rip it up the middle of the field. He is out past the 25 and out past the 40-yard line. Jarzinka, the former walk-on, out near the 44-yard line. A 41-yard return by Joe Jarzinka. And there's the fourth-year junior, Brock Heward, 6'5", 225. He already has many Washington passing records, like most touchdown passes in the season. The 23 he had last year. Tony Coates is his big offensive lineman, and he is huge, going six feet seven. 310 pounds in the backs and receivers. Jawar Hooker only has caught six passes in his entire career, but he might be the fastest player in college football, running a 10-1-8 in the 100 meters in track last spring. Heward will go right away to the air, and he will throw the pass to his tight end near the 45-yard line. It is incomplete. Second down and 10 yards to go. We will check the Arizona State defense. A lot of newcomers, so that means Aubrey Battle must play big. He is the defensive tackle. The linebackers, Adam Archuleta, has to replace the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year in Pat Tillman, and those are huge emotional shoes. And there you have Mitchell Friedman. His nickname is Fright Night. There's a reason. Talk to a lot of offensive receivers, and they'll tell you why. Second and ten. And they try Maurice Shaw, a very short game. And Tom, I wanted to ask you about this. One of the things that Jim Lambright told us yesterday was right now we're not a balanced offense. Our passing game is much further along than our running game. Yeah, it really is. And a large reason of that is because you have number seven back there, Brock Heward, leading the way. It hurts when you lose a guy like Pathon, 
So they lost in a wide out position, but I tell you what, Jawarren Hooker, speed kills. And he has plenty of that. Third and 10. Hewitt under pressure. The flag goes down at the 45-yard line. Let's see if there was defensive holding or interference because Jawan Cherry was all over the Washington receiver. Yeah, they were trying to get the ball to Gerald Harris that time. The other wide out. Hewitt does a great job standing in the pocket, being patient. You see where Cherry is all over the back of number nine Harris just trying to break through the middle he holding on to him the entire way good call by the official and that will get Washington out of trouble because they were faced with a third and ten if it goes incomplete they're punting to Bruce Snyder's explosive offense Heward now from the 44. Jawan Hooker could not hold on at the 12 yard line. Second down, 10 yards to go for Washington. Down 7 0. Hewitt will dump it off to his receiver. And Jason Harris very close to a first down. He's the senior from Diamond Bar, but they really need to play well because Maurice Shaw suffered a little bit of a right hamstring pull last week. And he's a good veteran player. He's been in there enough. He's caught balls. He's actually the leading receiver coming back with eight catches. See that? But Jason Harris playing at Bishop Amont High School down in Southern California. He's just been a good player to plug in at different times for that Husky offense. Third down, two yards to go for Hewitt. They spread everyone out. One lone setback, no tight end. And they run the football for the first down to the 29-yard line. Brought Shaw back in there, and he is their great inside runner. 538 yards. That's very strong when Rashawn Sheehy was your main go-to back, and he had over 900. Yeah, remember, Shaw did that really in all of three games last year, but I liked what Washington did just then. They really spread out the Arizona State defense, and they make them commit, and they make them get into coverage, and then you leave it up to Heward to get to the right play. Well, they'll spread five out now. And Heward is in the shotgun. And he is throwing. They will rush just four, and the pass goes incomplete. He was looking at first to Dane Looker, number 80, a 6'1 junior from Puyallup, who was Heward's high school receiver. And they had some record numbers in high school. There's Heward last year, the 23 touchdowns. That set a Washington record in just his sophomore season. Brock Heward, also remember Marcus Tuiasa Sopa, who we may see early on in this game. The number two quarterback of the Huskies, number 11, they rotate some, and, but between the two of them, last year setting the all-time Husky passing record. Second and 10. Flag goes down. And it looks to be illegal procedure. It will go against Washington, making it second down and 15 yards to go. Full start, offense, five yards from the previous spot, still second down, 68. We'd like to welcome those of you who are watching the Arkansas State-Minnesota game. Here we are at Tempe, Arizona, Sun Devil Stadium, and Arizona State has a 7-0 lead on a 13-yard scoring pass from quarterback Ryan Keeley to tight end Kendrick Bates. Second and 15. Heward has his favorite receiver, Dane Looker, and Looker is out of bounds. And that was a young man that Scott Linehan, offensive coordinator, said if people in Seattle are going to be surprised about one player, it's going to be number 80, Dane Looker. Dane Looker, of course, was Heward's high school team. And as you mentioned, he went to Western Washington where he he played point guard out there for the Western Washington College team, played two years, and then decided, hey, you know what? This basketball stuff's not cut out for me. I'm going to go back and go back to my roots and catch some passes from Brock Hewitt. Well, he needs to help him right here because it is a third and seven situation. Looker is that slot left. 
Hewitt steps up, fires, and it is caught near the 18-yard line. And it's Gerald Harris, the sophomore from Kent, Washington. Well, this is where a veteran quarterback just keeps moving the chains for you. It's a wonderful throw by Hewitt. Took a little off it. Got the receiver the ball and the first down. So that's two big third down conversions. One was third and very long. This pass one was third and seven. Now just outside the 18 yard line. Looker in motion. Hewitt rolling out, dumps it off to Looker, but threw it way too low. And Dane tried to pull it off, off his shoe chops. It is incomplete. Looks as though Hewitt had a little twinge in his in his hamstring there. They did a nice job of protecting him. He just rushed the throw just a little bit. Well, he is a big kid at 6'5, 225 pounds, and has taken some shots in his past. This drive started their own 43-yard line. They've used nine plays. Hewitt went deep one time, but that was incomplete. He's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And uh, he finds his receiver, but the pass goes right to the hands of Anthony Meisen. Right now, how do you think Brock feels about his game? Because he has missed his target a couple of times. Well, I think the Washington offense thus far has been doing a really good job of, of mixing their personnel to fit what Arizona State's doing. Arizona State's not making a lot of changes at the line of scrimmage, but he's frustrated because he's missed the last couple of passes. Right now, another big third down. We'll see how the veteran quarterback handles it. 9.35 remaining in this first quarter. And I think Arizona State, Steve, they're, they're really pressing the outside receivers of Washington. They're inviting Brock Hewitt to throw. They're also doubling Jawan Hooker with the safety right now. Hewitt with the draw. He's to the 10, the 5, first and goal. Was that Marquez Tuyasasopo? Yes, they brought Tuyasasopo off the bench, the backup quarterback, and sent Hewer to the sideline. 13 yards and a first down. Well, we knew we'd see both of them in the game at the same time. Tuyasasopo sneaks past everybody, but little quarterback draw. What a great job again. They empty the backfield out. Tuyasasopo able to skip ahead. He gets drilled by Archuleta, but it's good for the first down. So Hewer comes back in. Out for one play. Tuyasa Sopa comes in, runs 13 yards, gets the important first down. Now Maurice Shaw goes for a couple of yards inside that five yard line. Heward has a second and goal from the three yard line. They will go now double tight end. And the play action pass and Heward will roll left and fire for the touchdown. Three yards to tight end Reggie Davis, the 6'2 senior from Long Beach, California. Great play that time. A little deception. Washington trying to tie this game up after the three yard scoring pass from Brock Heward to tight end Reggie Davis. Now the point after try by Jim Skursky. State after going all the way down the field for 61 yards on their first drive sees Brock Heward and Marquez Tuiasa Sopa bring him back. Heward to Davis for the tying touchdown.
Brock you were talking with the offensive coaches about that last touchdown drive and it was interesting they split him out when Marquez Tuyasasopo ran in to get the first down and then Hewer with the play action for the score and yeah, they do a great job again three tight ends they load everybody up and you see Reggie Davis right along the end line wide open right behind everybody in the secondary for Arizona State and Brock you just easily tosses him a touchdown Team plays 57 yards. And Washington has tied this game at seven. 829 remaining in the first quarter. Bruce Snyder will now give his offense the football for the second time in this game. Out past the 25 yard line for Arizona State will start their offense. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Jackie Slater with you at Tempe, Arizona, where the Sun Devils and Washington Huskies are tied at seven. Ryan Keeley with his second offensive possession. He will dump the football off. J.R. Redman out past the 30 to the 34, maybe even the 35 yard line. You see the kind of quick rhythm throws that they're asking of Ryan Keeley. They ask him not to hold on to the ball long at all. Last year, Keeley took nine sacks up at Washington thus far tonight. Perfect. But that was really his coming of age, and a lot of the responsibility Bruce Snyder said went to himself. He had Marvell Smith sitting right next to him, and he said, that's it. We do have a flag on this play. It appears to go against the offense. But Marvell Smith was right to his shoulder. He said, what is this big guy sitting next to me when he should be on the field? So that's when he changed and put Marvell Smith to the left tackle and moved Gray Rugemer inside to the center position. For the snap, full start, offense, five yards from the previous spot, still second down. Steve, you bring up a great point. It, it really is an act of maturity when you go up to Husky Stadium with a young quarterback and and a young left tackle who's going to be a superstar. Marvell Smith, 6'6", about 300 spins on the dial. One of the best there is in the Pac-10. He replaced a great one there in Juan Roque, who was all Pac-10. Now they give the football to Redmond, and Redmond is firing through for the first down, out past the 40-yard line. Brendan Jones, the free safety who had to replace the great Tony Parrish, made the tackle. Oh, and that's a nice tackle by Brendan Jones because if he doesn't make that tackle, J.R. Redmond's gone. J.R. Redmond in the open field, an awfully tough hombre to bring down. His best game ever came last year against New Mexico State. 176 yards and only 10 carries. Now on play action, Keeley's going deep. Jackson not open. Very good coverage. To Ray Butler, the kid who had replaced Mel Miller. They just said to Ray is a competitive little guy who's only 5'9", but thinks he's six foot four. <laughs> and it was good coverage that time. It was interesting. Arizona State only releasing two receivers on the pass pattern. They must be concerned about that added pressure of Washington possibly getting into a blitz zone of Washington. Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator, knowing that they were effective last year, bringing some heat on Keeley. They may elect to do it in long yarded situations again. Well, they're showing a four man front and that is all the rush as Arizona State runs the football and Redmond is out to the field marker near the 49 yard line. It'll be third down and short. There's a look at Brendan Jones right there, who, of course, is filling in for the departed Tony Parrish. Parrish, what a great tackler and a veteran free safety. Now the starting free safety for the Chicago Bears. But Brendan Jones, Randy Hart said, well, we'll find out if he can tackle come Saturday night. And he's already been asked to make a few hits. Washington showing blitz on third down. Nope, they'll just rush four. Keeley steps up in the pocket, wins it, completes it. First down, 43-yard line. Kendrick Bates is tight end. Keeley and Bates hooked up earlier for a 13-yard touchdown. I 
I was surprised Keeley did not pull the ball down that time. He showed great patience, waiting for Bates to work against Marcus Hairston. Bates again coming up with a big catch. Now they'll go double tight end, and they will also send McDonald in motion. And they'll hand the football off to Jurassic Pope. That is Jeff Pope, the strongest player in the football team, a guy who bench presses more than 400. J.R. Redmond calls my best friend because he's usually <laughs> leading him on those sweeps. He's a lot of people's good best friends. I'm sure Ryan Keeley's also, but look at Polk right there. Just able, Washington defense not expecting the fullback hit right up the middle. And Polk is always pleading to Bruce Snyder his case. And hey, let me rush the football a little more. They got his chance there, went for seven. Now they give it to J.R. Not much there. They needed to get to the 32 yard line for a first down. They will be short by about two maybe even three yards depending on the mark and Bruce Snyder is checking that right now but well, what a great coach he has been 19th year now as a head coach he's been at Utah State took California from the pits of despair all the way to a great bowl game and then of course you see the coach of the year two seasons ago when he led ASU to the Rose Bowl and within seconds of a national championship and an unbeaten 12 and 0 season. Healy will run it again. Redmond bust outside. He gets the first down to the 30-yard line. Well, we've talked with the Arizona State quarterback, Ryan Keeley, about the way his knee came back from uh, surgery. And it's two times that it has affected him. Once in his freshman year, and then again last year. You know, where I get hit, how I get hit, uh, it's probably going to be if it's tested or not. Um, you know, just planning and stuff like that is a test on the knee in itself. But, uh, you know, as opposed to taking a direct hit, you know, I'll never know. Um, so hopefully it never happens again. Well, now Washington gets a direct hit from Jeremiah Farms on J.R. Redman. And that will make it second down. And they need Farms to play well tonight. Farms a little bit moving from a linebacker position down to a really an end position on the line of scrimmage. They're asking him to play a little bit bigger than a 6'1", 235-pound frame, but he's quick enough and he's young enough. He just has to get adapted to the position. Keeley will go back to the air and has all kinds of time. And the pass was dropped by J.R. Redman. It will be third down and 11. Jermaine Smith and Brendan Jones, both near J.R. Redman. Keeley's getting a lot of time to throw. He is getting time. It's not a great read. He throws into a lot of coverage right there, but it goes through the arms of Redman, but really throwing into triple coverage. J.R.'s got to catch that football. That's part of the growing experience of a young quarterback. Sometimes we forget he is just a sophomore, and he's driven this club already 41 yards in 10 plays in this drive. Now third and 11. Complete. First down, McDonald. On third and 11, he gets 17. I don't want to say Keeley predetermined it, but having played so long, and especially a high school teammate, Tarek McDonald, he knows right where he's going to go with the ball. Tarek McDonald runs a great route, but more importantly, he comes back to the football, thereby Torrey Butler unable to really make any play on it defensively, but a real fine play by McDonald. Will they bring J.R. Redmond back in the game? Excuse me, this is Baron Hightower, the redshirt freshman from Richardson, Texas, who they think is an exciting future when J.R. Redmond graduates. Hightower, 6'2", 209. He's built along the Michael Martin mold. Big physical back. But you know, when you think of Washington defense, you're thinking of an attacking, relentless style. And we have not seen it yet in this first quarter. Three minutes remain in the first period. Keeley runs into his fullback, and they will lose yardage on this play back at the 15-yard line. So Ryan must deal again on third and long. That time, Polk and Keeley just unable to get their exchange handoff executed that time. Someone went the wrong way. And it really puts Arizona State into a tough position again, having to throw the football now. And Washington 
I'd be surprised if they don't come with a blitz here in the red zone. Well, the defense hasn't stopped any third downs yet. Healy again with a lot of time throws. Did he catch it? Yes, he did! What a catch! Todd Heath, the true freshman. touchdown is good but what a catch on his very first play as a college football player Todd Heath. that the Sun Devil cheerleaders are smiling. They just watched a kid on his first college play, Todd Heap, make an absolutely remarkable catch. Todd Heap just frees up. No one really stops him from just zooming down the middle of the field, but a great throw. And then watch him just bat it up in the air, and he just pulls it down one-handed the whole way. He beats Marcus Harrison, but watch the throw. Inside shoulder. He just goes up with one hand, keeps great concentration on the ball, is able to pull it down. The referee right on the spot. Signify a touchdown. 71 yards, 14 plays, and Todd Heath will stay on the football field for special teams. 40 years from now, he'll have his grandkids on his knee and say, let me tell you about my first play in college football. And it was a beauty. This is Jawan Hooker, the speedster. He has a sideline. Watch this kid run. Cut down inside the 40-yard line. Jawan Hooker, who is the Pac-10's male track athlete of the year. He won the 100, the 200, and he just took that one 61 yards. And what? Look at how smooth he is. That, that's the most amazing thing. He picks up his blocks real nice, and all of a sudden he gets the corner. Jarzinka gets a block out in front, but look at his stride length alone. He actually runs up on his own man, and someone from the Sunday was able to make a nice play. 55-meter champion. He ran a 10-1-8, 100-meter time, which was the fastest in America this past year. Only six catches last season. Hewitt goes back to the air, fires that football complete to Dane Looker. Let's go down to Jackie Slater. Defensive coordinator Phil Snow spent the, first, the entire time out over here talking to his secondary and linebackers. When they go, to, when the Washington Huskies go to the spread formation, they're really taking advantage of the mismatches that they're getting with the linebackers and the safety. Really want to get those safeties out of the coverage, get the corners inside. Let's see if they make the adjustment when they get the spread formation. And Tom Phil does have some talent in the secondary, but they're not that deep in the defensive backfield. Hewitt spreading him out right now, and now he runs the football, and they've got the first down. It's almost like they're passing on running downs, and they're running on passing downs. Washington's doing a nice job of mixing it up. They, they really know each other very well. Uh, the Phil Snow, Dan Cozzettos, and the Linehans and the Hearts, they've all played together and worked together quite a bit. But spreading them out, Arizona State likes to play quarters defense. And when I say that, it's almost an umbrella coverage. But, Steve, you alluded to it. Beyond the four guys in the secondary, they're not real deep. And Washington, by spreading them out, is able to exploit their weaknesses. They may have to bring J.R. Redman in in their nickel package. He was a great defensive back in high school. And he's their star running back. They hammer the football to Maurice Shaw again. He doesn't get very much near the 26-yard line. Stephen Trejo makes the tackle. The kid who replaced Larry Johnson. An outside linebacker spot. There is Shaw. 
the kid from Sacramento El Camino High School. And one guy we haven't called his name a lot, but I'm sure we will as the game progresses. Mitchell Friedman, number 13, the all Pac-10 safety for the Sun Devils. This is the area, really the red zone, where he's a much more higher percentage of blitz down there. They don't ask him to do a lot of coverage, but right now he's playing over the top of one of the two, two, two receiver sides. And they will pitch the football. This is Maurice Shaw. And he smashes his way inside the 20, very close to a first down. Courtney Jackson made the tackle, but I like the way Shaw just lowers his shoulder. We are played the first 15 minutes of college football here in Tempe, Arizona. It is Arizona State 14, Washington 7, but the Huskies are driving. Arizona State has a 14-7 lead on Washington. Our Burger King first quarter summary looks like this. Arizona State, two touchdown drives on each of their first two possessions. They said first one to 41 wins. Washington, you look what they did in their first drive, and here they have it for the second time and driving. Total yards over 200 for the two teams. Well, the Sun Devils trying to get their defense fired up, but right now, they are facing a second and inches situation and Washington with a powerful offensive line that has a perfect center in a guy by the name of Brad Hutt. He moves over the football. Just one hut to him though. Tony Coates, Chad Ward on either side and Elliot Silvers and Aaron Dalen are the tacklers and Hewitt with a play to give. Goes up the middle to Dane Looker, his high school teammate for the touchdown but a flag is down and Hewitt will be left shaking his head. How about that? Or dead ball illegal procedure prior to the snap. But Tom, what a great call by Jim Lambright and Scott Linehan. Before the snap, full start, offense. That's five yards from the previous spot. And it's still second down. Uh, reset the clock to 15 minutes, please. 15. Thank you. Yeah, I think Brock knew right away someone had moved, but what a, it was a great call, as you said, Steve. And Dane Looker, I'm impressed. He could really, he could really break through the defense. Now it's second down and uh, a long five. Looker's at wing on the right side. Hewitt sends it his way, and Looker gets out of bounds near the 20-yard line. They only gain two on the play, so it'll be third down and three yards to go. Looker's one of these guys. He's 6'1", 190 pounds, but coming out of high school, Washington wanted to recruit him. He was only 150 pounds, and he was scrappy as all get out, but they ended up going after Gerald Harris and made a move on him, and then, of course, Looker going and playing basketball, but then uh, coming back to walk on at the UW. Shaw goes in motion, so Hewitt's by himself with no support blocking from his fullback. He will change over the line of scrimmage, and the clock is winding down. He just does get it off, and Hewitt sacked. Steven Trejo, the linebacker, blitz from the left side. Steven Trejo coming right off the top, and just a missed assignment by the tight end that time. Man should have been blocked. They had what they wanted. They just missed getting a hat on Steven Trejo. He shoots the gap and makes a tackle on Heward. So now on fourth down, there is a timeout in the field with 14 minutes and 21 seconds left in the first half. It is Arizona State by seven over the number 18 Washington Huskies.
Sun Devils by seven. Huskies are going for it on fourth down and ten. They'll spread everyone out and leave Hewer by himself in that shotgun. The blitz is on. He dumps it over the middle and near a first down. The mark will be important. And the mark is not favorable for the Huskies. They're going to bring in the chains, but I, I do believe that Arizona State held them. You can see the marker in it. Hewitt again, they, they spread out everybody out of the backfield. Harris comes across the middle, and Courtney Jackson, stride for stride, really makes a, a good tackle on the football. On Gerald Harris holding them. Football goes to Arizona State. Well, Brock Hewitt had them in the end zone for the tying touchdown, but Jim Lambright saw that call back by movement on his offensive line. And then another gutsy call by Lambeau. And he got them within inches of the first down. So now he's got to ask his defense, slow him down, fellas. And I think what's important for Washington, too, you know, Arizona State really hasn't slowed him down much. Washington has pretty much put the brakes on themselves. Keeley will run the football to J.R. Rendman, a short gain to the 19-yard line. Now on second and long, Keeley goes to the air, and he is out of bounds near the 30-yard line. He tried to go to his tight end, Bates, and the pass is incomplete as good coverage was from Brendan Jones. So Keeley faces a third down and nine. But he's four for four in converting third downs in this game already. And again, Arizona State doing a nice job moving the pocket for Ryan Keeley. They're not asking him just to drop back and sit in the pocket. They've moved the pocket around. It'll be interesting what they do now. Washington has not blitzed a lot up until now, but they're hugging the line of scrimmage this time. And Keeley's back. Keeley with plenty of time. Incomplete. He misfired that time because he had all kinds of time to find Lindsey Jackson, and Ryan is upset with himself. And there's the offensive coordinator, Dan Cazetta. He said that Ryan Keeley went on a mission to rehab his knee three times a day, seven days a week, and finally said, Ryan, you've got to slow down. You're going to be too tight for that first game against the Huskies. But the first time in this football game, we will see the Arizona State punter. And that is Stephen Baker. Butler will let it go at the 27-yard line. So an excellent punt by Stephen Baker of 55 yards on his first college punt. a penalty flag down. Not sure what the what the call is. If they hit, Arizona State had released somebody early down Illegal the field. Block below the waist by the receiving team during the kick. It's half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick. It'll be first down Washington. Fans. Well, they're looking to come back by Washington. State. I'm Steve Fizio for Tom Ramsey and Jackie Slater. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to further action. <laughs> one of those little Pete's. One of those little Pete's. I with that. <laughs> Second down, five yards to go for Washington. They're looking to tie this game, and Hewitt goes down the field. Looker for the first down. <laughs> Brock Hewitt's favorite. 
target in high school at Puyallup, Washington. Dane Looker and Heward and Looker are hooking up again. Started the game four for nine. Sizzling since. And Looker has four catches for 29 yards. And Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, said, you're going to like Looker. He, he's going to get open a bunch. And he's going to make some nice catches. He's got great soft hands. On first down, Hewitt again swings it sideline into his favorite target again. It's almost like he's looking downfield when he says, oh, it's closed up there. Where's my man, Dane Looker? Boy, it's interesting. Take what the defense gives you. That's what a veteran quarterback's going to do. He really isn't looking to his ex-teammate or his current teammate right now, Looker, all the time. Right now, Arizona State's playing a little more zone defense and taking away the perimeter receivers, and Looker... He's just able to work some magic inside. Five catches now. Second and one. This is one of those. Well, we've got a, a down to give up on second and short. We're going to throw it. And Brock's going down the field. And it is incomplete at the goal line. Intended for Reggie Davis. Hewitt is saying, hey, isn't that a score? Didn't he hold on to it long enough? Nope. Rattle around. Never had control, Brock. Boy, another great throw by Hewitt that time. And he had Looker underneath. He had both receivers, but he really throws a nice ball right into that ball's got to be caught. Reggie Davis might have hurt the safety. I don't know if it was Friedman back there or not. He's got some heavy footsteps. And you got to be looking for it, but Davis has to come down with that ball. Third down and one. Hewitt gives it. That's Pat Cotta. Touchdown! His first carry of the year. He goes for 16 yards, his longest gain of his entire career, and a touchdown. take the handoff and just break inside the defensive end. Trejo missed him and then Conniff got a nice block by Reggie Davis able to spring in for the touchdown. Well, what a great start to this football game in the Pac-10 Conference. Washington about ready to tie it up and they do with Arizona State at 14 all. 9.05 remaining in the first half and Pat Conniff, I mean when you get a hole this big that looks like fun. Yeah, Conniff just able to break the line of scrimmage, and then he had his motor running. He was surprised nobody was in the backfield there. See some nice blocks up front as well. The offensive line is really doing a good job for Washington. They're keeping the heat off of Heward right now, giving him enough protection, and he may, he may throw the ball 50 times tonight. I mean, right now, ASU's giving him every throw he wants and if you're able to slip in the fullback once in a while for a big gain and a touchdown that's awfully nice so Pat Conniff scores his first touchdown on a drive that goes 87 yards in 10 plays started at their own 13 yard line and Jim Lambright has to feel good with what he has seen because both of these coaches felt that the offense is worth special no question but they really felt that the defenses are somehow going to win this football game. And their young and experiences defense. The kickoff will be a short one. Now right to the goal line. Jackson. Lindsay cut down to the 13 yard line. A high kick that got some win. And a great return. And on that play, Elliott Silvers, what you see, he's going to come down and down block, and then they leave Trejo. He's going to come up, but you're going to see Conniff just take the ball and just race right up the middle. See where Conniff, he leaves Trejo just out. Right there, a good down block by the left tackle, Elliott Silvers. And the defensive coaches for Arizona State, right now they're trying to figure out Brock Heward and the way he has brilliantly Moved his club down the field on two wonderful drives. And now tied this game at 14. Keeley still with too much time. Does throw it away, though, as the coverage very good. Nigel Burton on Lindsey Jackson. Second and 10.
Keeley will run it this time, and he sends it to J.R. Redman, who dives forward for a first down, needed to get to the 23-yard line, and got it all the way out to the 27, where Burton made the touchdown saving tackle. Interesting how both teams, the offensive line, they really want to push up front. Marvell Smith, number 71, does a nice job, opens a big hole, and J.R. Redmond, lightning quick, able to get through the hole and then get up the field for another first down. Eight carries now for 44 yards for J.R. Redmond. Greg Spann will move to the right side, number two, and they'll set a pick for him, and Lindsey Jackson has... Well, close to another first down up near the 38-yard line. Lindsey Jackson, who was a terrific receiver last year with 53 catches. Just another nice little wrinkle to get one of your key receivers the ball. It's really a slip screen out in front. A couple nice blocks, and Lindsey Jackson showing his toughness. Getting up, getting up the field once again for a first down. Check that out. At least one catch in each of the last 26 games. See Jackson, the playmaker for the Sun Devils. Incomplete. That time, Keeley did get a little pressure. Now, two flags come and very, very late, Tom. <laughs> I think the referees got talked into that one. Lindsey Jackson was pleading for it. And to oblige. I thought it was a pretty good play by Jermaine Smith. Pass number one. Defense. Penalty the enforcement spot and foul. Automatic first down. Lindsey Jackson does what a quarterback wants the receiver to do. Come back to the football. You see Jermaine Smith had a little bit of hold of that. Backside of 83, but didn't warrant a flag. Come on. <laughs> so they'll have it first and 10 from the 45 yard line. Span goes wide right. To the left is Kenny Mitchell. And they'll run it. And they'll run that reverse again. That got him a first down. This time it is read beautifully. Nigel Burton, who transferred from the University of Pacific, started as a true freshman there and really has been a great competitor, and they need his leadership. Nigel Burton is a tough rover back. That's what they call him in the Husky defense. And Boy, look at that right there. It's a great play. Span jumping up in the air to avoid his own guy, but Burton right there to fill. Great pursuit again by the Husky defense. Kaylee will throw, completes the pass at midfield, and it's Craig Span diving forward, but he still will be five yards shy of the first down. Are you surprised that Arizona State isn't running more? I mean, Eight carries, 44 yards for J.R. Redmond, and he has been ripping big holes in that Washington defense. I think Arizona State a little bit is caught up in the, well, they scored, now we got to score again syndrome. But you get in this game, and it's a Pac-10 game. Don't forget, I mean, this game means everything to start off. Dan Cazetta on the sideline calling the plays, but they want productivity. They dump it off. They'll get the first down and more. J.R. Redmond inside the 20. J.R. Redmond out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Steve, you asked a great question a moment ago. Why don't they run the ball a little bit more? Well, if you can swing Redmond out and get him the ball on the perimeter, just as though it was a run, and this is what Keeley does, you put the ball in his hands, in the playmaker's hands, and then he goes out and just destroys the defense. That's, that is a great play by Redmond. It's awfully good hustle play, too, by Jermaine Smith of the Huskies getting him down inside the two-yard line. 47 yards on the pass. Now they'll bring that heavy load offense in. They'll run the football, and they've got the touchdown. Devon Hightower, the redshirt freshman from Richardson, Texas, has given ASU lead the lead again. Uh, 
both offenses very potent. As you can see, the defenses, both are going to get workouts tonight. Well, it was Dan Cazetto earlier in the week who said, we'd like to score as many points as fast as we can. <laughs> and it's like they're in a sprint. The extra point is good, and it's Arizona State 21. Washington 14, still with seven minutes remaining in the first half. Ryan Keeley with an excellent drive on the 47-yard pass to J.R. Redman, and he'll run the final two in with his big halfback. And DeVar and Hightower just following his blocks. They're, of course, they're following big number 71, Marvell Smith, who just makes a big hole in that Husky defense. They collapse down, and Hightower able to scoot in for the touchdown. Kickoff for Arizona State, Stephen Baker. Hooker, of course, no longer in the game. He is out until at least a half because of that shoulder problem. Arizona State will kick short to the 28-yard line, and they're going to recover it. Washington did not get over soon enough. I'm not sure if it was Boyer or not. The ball drops. That's a live ball now. Jarzik has got to get on that ball. Actually, Boyer was close. I, I, I'm not sure exactly who it was. It might have been number 29, Brandon Faulkner, who's a special teams player for the Sun Devils. So Arizona State in their potent offense has it again. Keeley on first and ten will he go deep immediately. No, he'll swing out again. It worked last time. This time, Washington reads it, and Redmond has no gain. We do have an update on Washington's favorite receiver, Dane Looker. He has a shoulder sprain, questionable for his return. They will check him at half, and that is a big blow to Brock Heward. 21-14, Arizona State just took the lead. Now they can double it with a score, but they now face a second and 10 situation. Keeley will hand the football off, and it's Redmond muscling his way inside that 25-yard line where Jones brings him down. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Jackie Slater at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, where the Sun Devils are up 21-14. It has been a shootout because it seems like Arizona State, every time they've had the football, they've taken it right down the field, even with poor field position. Washington has done the same, but the Huskies just made a critical turnover, awaiting the kickoff. The short kick landed, and Arizona State covered it first. Now it's third down and two yards to go. Look at this option. Redmond, first down. Redmond, touchdown. Man, Lambo knows what has to happen. You got to go back out and execute. That's an interesting play right there. High pitching to J.R. Redmond and then Redmond with all his grace flying into the end zone for the score but Hightower what a what a great wrinkle of a play that is they're bringing them all out of the books right now 
Arizona State goes up by two touchdowns. J.R. Redmond has rushed for 75. He has caught the football for 67 more, and he flies through the air with the greatest of ease. It has been a good day for the Pac-10 Conference, and in this opener, it has been a dandy of a show between Arizona State and Washington. But Arizona beat Hawaii earlier today, 27-6. Cal beat Houston. Oregon hammered Michigan State. Washington State beat Illinois. The only loss by a Pac-10 school today was by Stanford, who lost to San Jose State, 28-23. Now Washington, who failed to cover the last kickoff, Comes up with this one with J.R. Redmond. What a first half. Well, you talk about a Heisman Trophy. Hopefully you have to make great plays, and great plays are made by great players. J.R. Redmond, of course, one of the best all-purpose players in the nation, having a year ago been picked as all-pac-10 as an all-purpose back. Even though he only started one game out of 20 games, is phenomenal to me, but he's an impact player throughout the conference. Heward over the middle. This is Looker. Looker breaks a tackle. Has the first down at the 45-yard line. Dane Looker back in the game. We did receive a bad report on Looker. It was an update on Washington's Jaworin Hooker. And by mistake, they put down number 80 Looker, who gets open beautifully. And I think there are a lot of people in Seattle watching this guy go and saying, well, I'm glad we don't have both wide receivers out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Looker right now doing a great job freeing up. Again, that time they had a linebacker over the top. That's why Heward went to him. 35 yards in the play. Heward, boy, he's been perfect. Jarzinka for the first down. Joe Jarzinka. Brock Heward has been flat great. He has now completed 14 of 21 passes in the game. And if not for the misplay on the kickoff, Washington may have already tied this game up at 21, but he has not made one mistake. And remember, one touchdown called back for the Huskies that Heward had thrown uh, because of a procedure penalty, but really, they, he's just been able to march down the field at will. They'll run the option to Jason Harris. Harris to the 20-yard line and another first down. Phillip Brown on the tackle. Sun Devils with a 28-14 lead, but Washington on the move right now at the Sun Devils 16-yard line. Harris goes in motion. Hughes will have no blockers for him. He'll roll left. He's in trouble. Sends it to Harris, but it's incomplete. That's the second time they have gotten to Brock Hewitt when he's rolled to the left side. But they told their defense yesterday, remember, Brock really likes to throw left. So when they blitzed, they blitzed off that right side. Exactly. And what they've done, Eric Flowers, number 36, they're slanting to the wide side of the field as too, right where Hewitt's rolling to. But number 36, Eric Flowers, just a, gets a big hit on him that time. But Heward's going about 220, 225 at about 4 or 5% body fat. He put a little extra meat on his bones this year. He's got no help in the backfield again. They'll run shotgun, so it's up to the five in front of him. He has time. Flips the football. Looker to the five. First and goal inside the five-yard line. Well, I think we are finding one of the new stars in the Pac-10 conference, and it might be number 8-0. Yeah, if you're Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator, you're saying, would someone get on this guy and cover him? But it's really the process and the reads that takes the ball out to Looker each time. Hewer's scanning the entire field, but if they're going to keep giving him those completions to Looker, he's going to keep taking them. 15 completions tonight, seven to his favorite receiver in high school. 
They're back together again. They'll run it to Pat Connett. Not much there. Diving over the top of his defensive end, Quincy Yancey, but it was Aubrey Battle who stopped it at the initial, along with Ryan Riley, 6'2 junior from Yorba Linda, California. There's Battle, 25 starts from the last two years. He was so great in high school that a high school opponent tried to crawl through his legs to block an extra point rather than try and go through him. <laughs> Aubrey. He's a battle. Second and goal. Incomplete intended for Gerald Harris. It will be now third and goal. The hit came from Philip Brown, the backup nickelback from Bakersfield, California. Interesting. They, they look a little bit like Washington State did a year ago. Ryan Leaf, of course, spreading everything out. And Phil Snow having worked against that and, and actually pretty successfully what they did a year ago versus Leaf. They brought a little more pressure. They have not blitzed fewer that much, electing otherwise to double some of the outside receivers, leaving Looker the ball. Well, they'll have single coverage on Looker. He'll come over the middle, and they throw him the pass. And he catches it for the touchdown. That's what the West Coast offense is. The San Francisco 49ers run a pick play like that. It was a pick play, and that time Arizona State did bring the blitz, and Heward again just showing great patience, able to hold on to the ball as long as possible. You see everybody coming, and right there, he's able to just take one more step back and spin the ball low. Only where Looker can catch it. Well, you hear about go-to guys. Brock Hewer's go-to guy is Dane Looker. He has now caught eight passes for 89 yards, three on this drive, and we are only in the first half. Everybody right here is going to come with the blitz, and you're going to see Looker just come in on the inside. And it's a great throw by Hewer again. Just a little pick play. Everything clears out in the middle. Easy throw, easy catch. Touchdown, Huskies. a flag down back at the 17 yard line it appears to go against Arizona State and yeah, Gordon Reese the referee there to make the call and Bruce Snyder over there talking to Hightower his backup tailback probably saying hey you're probably going to get a little more work they've been running J.R. Redmond quite a bit, but illegal block in the back by the receiving team during the run back. Half the distance to go from the spot of the foul. First down. Anytime, anytime you have a player as good as Redmond, you want to find ways to get him the ball. Well, those have been the Arizona State possessions. That one punt. What happened there? <laughs> Healy on first down immediately goes to the air, and it is caught by Lindsey Jackson. And Jackson escapes, and Lindsey's out to the 30. Jackson to the 40. 44-yard line. What a move by Lindsey Jackson. A 
Well, this is as simple as it gets. Run after catch. All he does, he runs a good little turn around. He comes back to the football. And watch the move right there. He picks up a block and lets the pursuit overrun him. Then Lindsey Jackson just becomes a good football player. He right there, another move. He didn't have to be able to gain a 36 for the Sun Devils. Well, the Huskies, and yes, with many new members on that defensive front, have put no pressure on Ryan Keeley at all. In the pocket, Keeley with time again now throws it away. Really overshot Lindsey Jackson by a good 10 yards. Here's Ryan Keeley going back to the air. And right now they are just cutting up the Washington defense. Kenny Mitchell with the first down catch of 15 yards. Jim Lambright, who was a defensive coordinator for Don James, he's probably figuring, goodness, how do we defend this guy? He's just happy he's not the coordinator tonight. He, has, he gets to ask Randy Hart, hey, what's, what the heck's going on down there? The number's on Keeley, two TDs thus far. 13 out of 19. And cutting through the middle of the football field is that redshirt freshman, Devon Hightower. And tomorrow on Fox Sports, you will have a chance to watch Mark McGuire. In a doubleheader, we'll have an NFL game early and also go with Mark McGuire against the Cincinnati Reds as the St. Louis Cardinals are hosting the Reds in that series. It'll be a 4 o'clock Eastern start. NFL, Major League Baseball, doubleheader on Fox. Keeley back to the air. Finally with pressure, maybe there's too much because there's a penalty flag down and it could be holding against the Sun Devils. You know, we started this game and we were talking about two great young quarterbacks. It is holding against Arizona State. We have not been disappointed one bit. First and very long for ASU. 25 yards to go. Healy again with so much time completes the pass to Craig Spann. Nearly back to the original line of scrimmage where Todd Johnson makes the tackle. Todd Johnson. Yeah, Arizona State, the offensive line, both offensive lines are playing awfully well, too. They're protecting their passers, allowing them a lot of time to read the defense and get the ball to the open. Man, I'm just, I'm really impressed. Both quarterbacks, just a great deal of patience in finding the open receivers. Brock Hewitt on the sideline, probably telling his offense, if they can just stop him, we'll get the ball back. The blitz is on, Keeley runs away from it, and now a run up the field. Is bumped out about five yards shy of a first down by Jeff Johnson, the inside linebacker. There's Lester Towns back in the game. He dropped a 45 pound weight on his foot and wasn't expected to play. Arizona State coaches were saying he'll play, and here he is. Yeah, Lester Towns, he's going to only have a a limited number of plays. If he gets 20 plays tonight, I'll be surprised. But the leading tackler, of course, a year ago for Washington and a bunch in his career. Keely again. Downfield. Broken up at the last moment by Toure Butler. So it's fourth down and five yards to go. And Arizona State will bring on their kicking unit with 51 seconds left in the quarter. That might be too much time for Brock Heward. It might be. I tell you what didn't take a lot of time was Toure Butler playing catch up to that ball. He was out of position and then he made a great play just getting back to it. Mike Gauthier coming in for the field goal. Gauthier here in Phoenix, Arizona. He's a transfer from the University of Missouri. He will attempt a field goal from 42 yards out. Healy with the hole. It is on the way. And it is no good. So Arizona State with a seven-point lead, 46 seconds left as Bruce Snyder has to maybe chop on his fingernails a little bit as Heward gets the ball back. And that, that concerns Bruce a little bit. They missed three you know, field goals a year ago bad. up in Seattle with a very talented place kicker. And Bruce knows, hey, points, you got to have the points on the board. And as hot as Heward is, I would be surprised if they run the clock out. He has been so efficient. He's thrown for two touchdown passes, and Bruce Snyder, one of the great coaches in college football, and Jim Lambright, who's part of Don James' staff and also grew up in the organization. 
30 years in Seattle with the Huskies. Washington has two timeouts remaining. Hewitt back, loops it long. His man is open, and Gerald Harris diving at the end could make the play. Second and ten. That time, Brock Hewitt a little upset with himself, knowing that he had Harris open on the wing that time. Just a straight up route. Again, I like Arizona State too. They're they're not afraid to press. I mean, they're they're out there pressing the wide receivers and. They're right up in their faces, but that time Gerald Harris able to get off the bump corner and get up the field. Hewitt, oh, he had his man open, and he should have held on to that football. Reggie Davis, who already has a touchdown catch in this game, who's had to go in and out of his hands, third and ten. Reggie Davis, that time the ball was right on top of him. He came out of his break, and... Heward, just remarkable timing, able to get the ball, hit him right on that number five. Hey, as you showing blitz on third and ten. Blitz comes, Heward picks it up, fires the football. It is incomplete, fourth down and ten yards to go. Fourth down. I think Brock believes one of his receivers ran the wrong route. Yeah, he wanted him to sit down, I think, on the route, meaning that he just wanted him to, to run a stop. <laughs> Coverage predicated that, but just not on the same page. They have to kick it away. And he didn't have much time to adjust because Arizona State was in his face, getting there in a hurry. Now Ryan Fleming comes on to punt it away. Ryan, the kid from St. Olaf College, transferred to Washington. And he hits it. J.R. Edmond will let it go, and it goes out of bounds of the 42-yard line. 26 seconds remaining on the 33-yard punt by Ryan Fleming. Still time for Arizona State as the Sun Devils holding a seven-point lead here in the first half. Huskies have two timeouts remaining. So do the Sun Devils. Or they might have thought about running the football on third down just to kill the clock and keep it out of that kid's hands. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Arizona State comes away with great field position. You get one play down the field, you might be able to take another shot with a field goal. Stay tuned for our halftime report, our Marriott halftime report with Kevin Frazier. And Keeley and Arizona State will run the clock out. Bruce Snyder saying, let it go. So Arizona State heads to the locker room. So does Washington. And it's been a great first half here in Tempe. It's the Sun Devils 28 and the Huskies 21. Welcome back to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. It is 28-21, and Arizona State has the lead. Steve Fiziak along with Tom Ramsey, my quarterback friend, and I believe the reason you've got that smile on your face, you've enjoyed watching these two quarterbacks. We've seen Brock Hewitt and Ryan Keeley. Well, I tell you what, it's awfully nice to say that the quarterbacks are going to get the ball up the field and spread it all over the place, and that's exactly what they've done. Ryan Keeley, Brock Hewitt, better than expected, and really two highly potent offenses. And you take a look at the first half stats, and you see a lot of offense not much defense no it really hasn't the defense has been chasing the ball all over the field first downs pretty even across the board rushing yards there hasn't been a lot by Washington but ASU's done a nice job getting the ball spotting the ball to J.R. Redmond total yards fairly even but Brock Hewitt of course already closing in on some game passing records for Washington and of course uh, Dane Looker right behind him in uh, the reception category all right, let's go down to Jackie Slater on the field. 
Hey, guys, I had an opportunity to talk to head coach Bruce Snyder, and he is really pleased with the play of his offense, especially his running back, Jared Redmond, but he is concerned about his secondary play. He's going to take one of the linebackers, the big run-stopping linebackers, off the field, put speedier linebackers and more secondary guys in to cover them when they go to the spread formation. Now, the report on wide receiver Jawan, Jawan, How Jawan Warren, I'm sorry, is out of the ball game with a separated shoulder. Back to you guys. Wow, that means Washington will lose the fastest player in college football in 5'11 sophomore Jawarren Hooker, who brought a kickoff back 61 yards and hurt his shoulder on that play. So they'll have to make do with this kid bringing back kickoffs, Joe Jarzinka, and he brings it back near the 29-yard line. The quarterback comparison is a beautiful story. Heward, 16 of 28, 165. Keeley, 14 of 21, 224. I don't see many mistakes by those two guys. No, both of them have been very patient, taking what the defense gives them, and the defense have been, has been giving them a lot on both sides of the ball. Arizona State's done a nice job of moving the pocket. Conversely, Washington, the offensive line's done a great job protecting Heward. Well, Brock now doesn't have his home run threat in Jawarren Hooker. He'll have to play little ball with guys like Dane Looker, Gerald Harris, Todd Elstrom. And they also will run the football to start the second half with Maurice Shaw. Shaw, the 5'11", 215-pound junior from Sacramento, California, pushes the football up near the 35-yard line. And Maurice now with 24 yards rushing on seven carries in this game. As Washington, which has always been a dominant running team, only had 71 yards in that first half. Hewitt flips it left. Jarzinka first down and more. Out of bounds near the midfield stripe. Joe Jarzinka, the former walk-on, the kid from Gig Harbor, Washington. Joe Jarzinka, what he ends up doing, he just runs a quick in and a quick out. Heward able to get him the ball right away. That was a nice job. Again, they're just spreading out that defense. A gain of 16 for Jarzinka. Looks like Joe got his hair cut. Remember he had it down? Yeah, he had some, some long locks. From midfield. Heward again stays in the air. Not much pressure. He'll run it now and gain about five yards to the 45-yard line. When Brock is 6'5", all he has to do is lean forward. He's got three yards. Brock Heward in the first half was just terrific. This was the touchdown pass he had to his tight end, Reggie Davis. And then to Dane Looker, his high school friend. Set that record last year with 23. Now in his career, he's moving on up. Separating himself from the rest of the pack. And there have been some great quarterbacks in Washington history. This is Shaw inside the 45-yard line. I mean, you talk Washington football. You talk Mark Brunel, Chris Chandler, Hugh Millen, B.J. Hobart. Uh, Billy Joe Hobart, um, Damon Hewitt, his brother. Don Heinrich, Steve Bloor, Warren Moon. So look at those stars. And this guy's got a lot of the records, and he's only starting his junior year. <laughs> a bunch of good players here. Warren Moon, of course, still playing in the league. Mark Brunel, an all-pro now with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jason Harris, the pass was too short. Fourth down and three, and Harris had an opening that would have given Washington a first down, but really one of the first mistakes that Brock has made. And yeah, that time, Heward, the ball just not delivered up in the, in the receiver's hands. Very tough catch. Ryan Fleming comes on tonight for his second punt. J.R. Redmond back for the return. Andre Desichur, 
will let it go. He was back deep with J.R. Redmond. So Arizona State will start their offense from the 20-yard line. Well, now Arizona State gets to have some fun. They're back on offense, and they've got their quarterback, Ryan Keeley, on the field. He had that great first half, threw for almost 2,200 yards last year and 15 touchdowns in his first year quarterbacking when he took over for Jake Plummer. And J.R. Redmond, who's closing in on 100 yards rushing, blasts his way up and past the 25-yard line, where he's brought down by Jeremiah Farms. The time Washington doing a little stemming right before the snap of the ball, which means they're just moving people around prior to the snap and allowed Jeremiah Farms to really free himself up and to make a tackle. He's been tied up a little bit by some of the big linemen of Arizona State in the first half. Second and five. Keeley, they finally got pressure on him, but he finds an open target in Craig Span for the first down. That's one of the rare times that Washington has been in the face of Ryan Keeley. And what do you think Washington has to do to be successful second half? I think Washington has to keep applying pressure on Ryan Keeley right there. You see they almost get him that time. Marcus Harrison blitzing from his inside linebacker position, but he's still able to get the ball out to Span and then Span. Again, doing a great job getting enough yardage for the first down. He has not been sacked tonight after being sacked nine times last year. And now Redmond fumbles the football and Washington recovers. Arizona State and Bruce Snyder has been one of the most sure-handed football teams in the history of college football. Arizona State running backs have lost only six fumbles the last four years. Five last year. Redmond drops the first of 98. Yeah, I'm not sure who got the hit on him, but the ball popped out. Great pursuit that time. Nigel Burton might have been the one, the rover back, who hit Redmond. But Redmond, I was just going to compliment him. His knifing running ability got upfield, got north and south, and then Burton came over and put a helmet right on the ball. So Hewitt's got it back. Good field position right inside the 50. He may change up here. Maurice Shaw is his running back. As he spotted single coverage, no, he's going to give it to Shaw. And Shaw breaks free, and Shaw near a first down as he muscles his way to the 41-yard line. Quincy Yancey on the tackle, the defensive end, 6'8", 248-pound sophomore for from Glendale, Arizona, gained 30 pounds the last two years, and they made him a defensive end when it looked like he may be an offensive player. Second and two. And they're showing pass. They're spreading out five. Hewitt going for the home run. Incomplete. Gerald Harris at the 10 yard line. Third down, two yards to go. They'll give it to Shaw. Shaw very close to the first down, but I don't know if he made it. Quincy Yancey slugged him from the right end. And that tackle, Aubrey Battle, was also there to help out on the stop. Yeah, that's just good defense right there by Arizona State stacking it up at the line of scrimmage, not allowing Shaw to get his shoulders lower than what they're coming across the line as and get a huge down for the Huskies. Look at this, fourth and one. Washington's going for it. Hewitt rolling left. Has his man Looker, and Looker's got the first down. His ninth catch. He is two catches shy of the Washington record for most receptions in one game. And Looker hurt himself that time as he just runs a quick arrow, and Hewitt's able to get him the ball. Looks like he might have twisted his ankle a little bit as he went out of bounds. And it is Dane Lookers limping over the sideline with nine catches in the ball game. The record set by both Jim Craig and Jim Cope of 11. So Looker with eight catches in the first half. If he's healthy, you think he's got a great shot at that. 
His last catch results in a first down. Hewitt rolling right completes the pass, and Gerald Harris escapes one and then muscles his way near the 25 yard line. You know, if a play works, just flip it over and run it on the other side. That's exactly what they did that time, getting the ball to Harris. Same play they had run on the other side. Nice little rollout by Heward, able to free himself out of the pocket and just get the ball after the wideout. And Tom, you almost get the feeling that Brock Heward is setting them up with his short plays. Eventually, he may just rifle it down the middle of the field. Yeah, I think it's about time to get the ball back to Reggie Davis, who's a big target and can work that inside for you. He's a good mismatch against that, against that linebacker inside. Hewer, though, goes back to the other side, and Joe Jarzinka for a short gain and a late hit by Mitchell Fright Knight Friedman on Joe Jarzinka. There is a flag in the play, and it might be against Fright Knight. One of the things Friedman brings, he, Friedman with a really aggressive style of play back there in that free safety zone for the Sun Devils. That's it. He can spark up his defense with big hits and big plays, but this one coming late. Anytime a player is on the ground, and it looked like he tried to let up. I mean, give credit to Mitchell Friedman. It looked like he tried to ease up a little bit. I mean, it's not like he went in and speared Jarzinka. Whatever you say, Tom. I thought he tried to come up. <laughs> he could have hit the turf just as easily. <laughs> First and 10 from the 12-yard line. Washington trying to tie this game up. Shaw. He spins to the 10-yard line. <laughs> All brief battle. They're... Defensive tackle from Poway, California, near San Diego, making the tackle. And they need good play from Aubrey Battle inside there. That interior, they lost Jeremy Stott from a year ago. Stott, what a great player he was, but Aubrey Battle really having to step it up in the interior for the Sun Devils. Dane Looker was injured back in the game. He's the left slot on the top of your screen. Here it goes the other way. Jared Harris, and look who comes up with it. Dane looking for the touchdown. Well, I tell you what was kind of fun. I had my eyes on Dane Looker the whole time, and he and he came off the ball with a great release, but he just kept running. <laughs> he was looking in the right place. Ten catches now for Dane Looker for 105 yards. It is up. It is good. And this game is tied at 28. What a wonderful way to start a Pac-10 conference season and a Pac-10 conference career for that young man. Dane Looker is on his way to a record-setting performance in his college debut as a football player. Look at this play to finish that touchdown. Now, here in the ball, he goes to Harris. The ball gets punched up in the air, and Looker, who just stayed on his right, watch his release. That's a great release right there. He's wide open, but he just follows the path of the ball all the way across the formation. Lo and behold, ball lands right in his arms. Tenth catch. We've seen some great debuts. We've seen 10 catches by Looker. There's the short kick, and it is covered at the 49-yard line by Washington. But there is a flag down, so let's just wait a moment. Skursky, the kicker, recovered his own boot, but his team was offsides. What a great call by the Washington coaching staff. That man right there, Jim Lambright, 
not afraid to go with the onside the kick. kick. That's a five yard penalty and a re kick. You know, are we seeing Jim Lambright or is this Bob Toledo? He's a riverboat gambler. Well, I tell you, they, they call procedure because somebody beat Sikursky to the ball there. I mean, they, they were offside on that kick, and that sometimes happens. But boy, you tie it up at 28 all. What do you do? Roll the dice. Let's go for the onside kick. I like that. So Skursky must kick off now from the 30-yard line, five yards back. And Arizona State won't be surprised by it now. They're expecting a long kick. He still hammers it to the two-yard line. Excellent kick. Lindsey Jackson back to the 20. Lindsey Jackson tries the middle. He is to the 40-yard line. You know, it's interesting. Both coaches remarked when we talked to them yesterday that what we want to do defensively is be better at the end of the game than at the beginning. Make progress. Now we're seeing the special team play by Lindsey Jackson. But the defense sometime in this game has to step up. And when Lindsey Jackson just able to pick his spots and weave through the would-be tacklers. It's a great job. Great awareness out on the football field. Healy goes right back to the air. Now Washington finally gets some pressure, and there's their first sack of the night. And back here, J.R. Redmond goes off the right side and runs for a couple up past the 40-yard line. There's Todd Johnson, the senior from Bellevue. He's a walk-on from O'Day now, playing on the scholarship, but he has to replace a good one in Jerry Jensen. Talk about underrated. Boy, you know, Todd Johnson's a guy who's played in the program. He's awfully fast at that weak side linebacker spot. And it's a position where you have to be able to run in that Husky defense and track down plays. Keeley back on third and long. Throws underneath. And look at that extension by Kendrick Bates. He may have gotten the first down just by lunging forward. And throwing that ball out. Dangerous a little bit how he's waving the ball out there. But again, a heady play by Kendrick Bates. And, and really another great throw by Keeley right on the numbers as... Bates is running across a formation. Shows Keeley's awareness after getting sacked. Comes back, stands in the pocket. Shows great patience. And they will come up maybe a hair short of a first down. Arizona State's offense wants to go for it. And Bruce Snyder says, let's go. He'll bring in his heavy load set. You see how close the football is to that first down marker. It's not even a link on the chain. You're at the metal portion of that post. Well, they brought in two tight ends. Bates and Matt Sircone. And I think you sneak it right behind Gray Rugemer, your Pac-10 first teamer. They send Bates in motion. And they will run that way to J.R. Redmond, and I don't think so. Redmond was stopped right at the 50-yard line by Jeff Johnson. Well, you know Jim Lambright has a lot of confidence in his defense. When he ties the score up, he's willing to try an onside kick. They drive the ball deep. Lindsey Jackson gets a great return, but... What the Washington defense did that time, a lot of blitzing in that series of downs. They were challenged on fourth down. They shut down Arizona State. Watch the line of scrimmage. Watch the push that Washington gets that time. Jeremiah Farms, Johnson, Akbar's in there, and I believe Nigel Burton as well. It's a whole host of Huskies. Tom, were you surprised that they used a play that took a little bit in development? Yeah, I was. I, I really was. I would have sneaked it myself. That far to go, follow your all-pack 10 center. 
So now Washington has it with that potent offense, and they fake the reverse. Hewitt goes long, but he will throw it away because the coverage was absolutely beautiful on Gerald Harris. Two Sun Devils right next to him, Courtney Jackson and Philip Brown. And it looked like Hewitt may have his, hit his hand on a Sun Devil helmet. Maurice Shaw breaks the tackle. Shaw to the 40. First down, Washington. Shaw is just a wonderful player. A little counter run that time. Shaw's got great speed as well. You mentioned to Warren Hooker's 10-1 speed. Shaw, Shaw's a 10-600 meter guy. Well, he hasn't been able to break through tonight. 12 rushes, 53 yards on the evening. But he's got great speed as well once he gets into the open. They need to keep him healthy coming off back surgery. He's got that right hamstring problem. He'll sweep the right side and move inside the 40-yard line where he's knocked out by Phillip Brown. Well, the Washington Huskies, when Rashawn Sheehy was the running back last year, they were looking for a national title. They were ranked second in the nation last season in hosting Nebraska, but they got that early frost warning when Scott Frost came in and ripped off two long touchdowns, and they knocked Heward out of the game. Now, Marquez Tuyasasopa did a great job replacing him. But they could not stop the Nebraska running game. Washington with this young defense trying to hold off Arizona State. Catch is made. Tackle broken by Reggie Davis. And then he muscles his way inside the 15-yard line, carrying two would-be tacklers. 24 yards in the play by Reggie Davis in what should really have been about a five, six-yard gain. Yeah. And there's a great challenge at the end of the play, too. Reggie Davis, I'd keep giving him the ball. Watch him, his athleticism. Once he catches the ball and puts his hand down, stays up, but he takes on Mitchell Friedman. He says, come on, Fright Knight. And he runs him over. I have a couple words right at the end. Huskies on the move again. From the 13, they'll run it. Harris, big hole to the six-yard line. <laughs> In the offensive line of Washington, big man on big up front. Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator, knows that Aubrey Battle and the rest of his comrades up front for defensive line of Arizona State needs to toughen up a little bit. But right now, Brad Hutt, Chad Ward, Tony Coates, the interior of that Washington line really just taking control. Washington has never led in this game. Second and two. Harris, not much there. Bust outside. The Huskies have the first lead of this game. Five yards by Jason Harris. And Bruce Snyder's probably saying, okay, offense, your turn. Skursky on to try and give Washington a 35-28 lead. Arizona State has led throughout or been tied, and Skursky is perfect with the point after touchdown. And it is Washington with their first lead of the night, 35-28 on Jason Harris's five-yard run. Constraints. We move ahead to further action. Here's Ryan Keeley on Here's third Ryan Keeley Keeley on fires. The catch is made at the 15-yard line by Kenny Mitchell. They are very close to a first down. Let's see where they mark it. Yes, they'll get the first down. Kenny Mitchell haven't heard a lot from him tonight. Big, strong receiver, though. 6'4", 202. Wow. Keeley takes a big hit right there. Tuaea. 
drops the hammer on him. But Kenny Mitchell there to make a key third down reception. And Steve, you mentioned a moment ago, it's just two down territory. I believe so, even if they don't make it, although they did. But I think right there, you're, you're committed to two downs. You know, if you come up short there, you go for it on fourth as well. Let's check out our game summary by Burger King. Washington, 21 unanswered points since trailing 28-14 in the second quarter. Had the lead. Now they've got it at 35-28. 326 yards in the first half by ASU. And Looker making his NCAA debut has 10 catches. Keeley. He goes down at the 25-yard line. Jeremiah Farnes. With the third sack by Washington, Keeley was sacked nine times in a 26-14 Husky victory last year in Seattle. That's one of those situations right there. Ryan Keeley just gets tracked down. The team speed of Washington, able to pursue the corner. Farms comes in, and actually, I thought he kept a hold of it, but Nigel Burton comes from his rover back position and continually applies pressure. Now he needs 21 yards for the first down. They'll blitz again. Keeley steps up in trouble. And was he helped along by Greg Rugemer? Looked like Rugemer kind of pulled him forward. He only he won't gain a thing. It'll be third and 21. Bruce is going, you know what? They didn't press us as much in the first half. Washington's defense growing up here in the second half. Okay. Third down. Four in the second half. Yeah, they, they didn't blitz a lot in that first half, and I'm sure at halftime they said, hey, what adjustments can we make? Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator, said, hey, we need to apply a little more pressure. They can still stay in their gaps, play gap control defense, but bring a couple more people. Marcus Harrison, number 27, has come a lot and created a lot of problems here in the second half. They're just showing a four-man front, and they'll bring just four, and then Keeley fumbles the football. Boy, Arizona State has made too many mistakes here in the second half. A fumble that resulted in a Washington touchdown. They went for it on fourth down and one, and Dan Cazetto's running back, J.R. Redmond, did not get it in, and Washington took it in for a touchdown. And now, on fourth down, they'll be forced to go for a long field goal of 43 yards. Mike Gauthier missed his first attempt from 42. He hits it. It's long enough. And it's good. It's Washington 35, Arizona State 21. We'll be right back in Tempe, Arizona. Thirty five thirty one Arizona State thought they had the lead on that excellent return but check out the penalty you found it. Well it took a, it took a lot of research but we're going to see right here watch it as it happens and you end up seeing it the clip and it calls back a 67 yard return by J.R. Redmond points off the board for a state. So they'll have to do it the hard way, and Jeff Polk will start at their fullback, slams his way forward, and crushes his way to the 32-yard line. Clock winding down to 10 minutes remaining. Bruce Snyder's football team, they're trying to continue the tradition. He started five years ago. And that great group of Jake Plummer and Keith Cool and Terry Battle and Derek Rogers and is now transferred to guys like Keeley and Redmond and the Jacksons, Lindsey and Courtney. But he has to continue his dominance in the league by winning tonight. And it is the redshirt freshman, Byron Hightower, off the left side. Very close to a first down. It'll be third down and short. The tackle was made by Jeff Johnson. Lester Towns playing a lot tonight. Number 17, you saw. Ian Hairston, the two starting inside backers. 
Third down and one. They'll run it. They'll get the first down. High tower to the 40-yard line. A gain of three. Again, Arizona State having to go back and now just settle back into their offense. But you got to keep an eye on the clock now because if you just if you run the ball too much and you don't make the progress, you're going to find yourself short on the scoreboard. Healy on play action, and the flag goes down. Ryan said, oh, man, every time we take a step forward, we take two back, and Dan Cazzetto is concerned start. about Offense, that. Five yards to the previous spot, still first down. When you want positive gain on first down, take a look at the penalties. Arizona State loading them up here in the second half, 10 for 80, but any time you move the chains, come first down, you want that positive gain on first down. You want a second and short. You can do so many other things. You can throw the ball long. You can throw a little play action. But the Washington defense really making some plays here in the second half. Now Keeley will hand off again, and this time high tower, high steps and past the 40 yard line. They'll run again. And they got Redmond back in the game for a short game. Redmond stayed out for about four plays, trying to catch his breath after that long punt return for a touchdown that was called back. But Dan Cazetta really felt that Arizona State came together after their loss to Washington last year. Why? I think it was a time for, for the whole team to grow up a little bit. They, Ryan Keeley was a big test to play up at Seattle. J.R. Redmond started in place of Mike Martin. Ended up putting up a lot of points as well yards per game first five games and you see what they did the remainder six but they made some changes in the offensive line as well Keeley trying to hit Craig Spann can't catch the football and now Arizona State will be forced to punt with just seven minutes 11 seconds remaining seven minutes and 10 seconds remaining in this football game and trailing by four Boy, they have been held down to seven points after exploding for almost more than 300 yards and 28 in the first half. Randy Hart's done a great job of changing his defense. This is a young group he's working with, and he has to be proud of the way they have played in the second half. Jarzinka fumbles it but covers it himself at the 20-yard line, and that's where Washington will start their offense. We'll come right back as the Huskies try to hold on to a four-point lead in Tempe. Washington with a 35-31 lead on Arizona State. Let's take a flashback. Two years ago, September 7th, 1996. Brock Heward, it was a time where he grew up. And now he comes out to the football field again at the 20-yard line, and he will try and lead his Washington Huskies to a victory in a place they lost at two years ago, 45-42. And Heward will give the football to Maurice Shaw, and Shaw breaks a couple of tackles and muscles his way very close to a first down near the 30-yard line. Let's go back to 96. They were down 42-21 because of plays like that by Jake Plummer. But Corey Dillon would score a late touchdown to bring them back from 42-21 deficit to tie it at 42. And Robert Neese, with five seconds left, would kick the field goal. That would give ASU the victory, 45-42. Arizona State would win every game that year, win the Pac-10 championship, go to the Rose Bowl, lose to Ohio State. But the last three times that these two teams have met, to start the season, 
the winner has either won or shared the Pac-10 Conference Championship. So what a big game early in September. Well, you don't think they're thinking about that right now. Each head coach I know has ingrained it into his players that just that, the winner of this game is gonna be the lead horse in the race and the other one's gonna be playing catch up. But right now, I think having a more veteran quarterback on your side really helps out. Brock Hewitt able to make some great checks at the line of scrimmage here in the second half. Right now, he's called upon to make another big play. Third and inches. Clock nearing five and a half left in the ball game. Heward with the sneak. He should have it. This is the best game I've ever seen Brock Heward play. Boy, he's playing exceptional. And, and I'll tell you what, it, it comes with a lot of hard work in the offseason, a lot of hours put in. And that's what it takes to win. I mean, Jim Lampright will tell you, have that experience at quarterback. Bruce Snyder will tell you the same thing. They've been in the league long enough and been around football long enough. A guy that makes the throws in the heat of battle, 23 of 39, 238. The big number there is zero interceptions. He's not turning the ball over to the other side. And been making all the right reads and getting the ball where it needs to go. Of course, lunging ahead for the first down as well. And you add to that the fact that he did not have one skill player coming back from a season ago that started a football game. And Jawarn Hooker, his home run threat, is injured early in the game and has to come out and hasn't played it down since. Yeah, their resiliency has really been impressive tonight. Hewitt from just across the 30. Brock will go to the air, dump it off to Jason Harris, and Harris is met for a short game, knocked out by Jawan Cherry. Cornerback took over for the great Jason Simmons. And this is where Jason Harris wants to stay inbound. You don't want to have that clock stop when you're ahead. You want to, a real heady play might have been to make a, a cut, at least fall down, stay in bounds. Let that clock run right now. You're at a crucial stage of the game, five minutes left. And Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator, said, if you don't hit Brock Hewitt, he will make you pay. Can we get around him in a four or five man rush? That's what they've done with most of this evening. Now Hewitt in a passing situation. And they don't get the rush on. It's a quick toss, and it's broken up beautifully by Jawan Cherry. Elstrom saying, wasn't I interfered with? Yeah, he Heward wanted the flag as well on that. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Arizona State and the Pac-10 Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of Arizona State and the Pac-10 Conference. Heward already with a career-high 41 throws in this game for 239 yards. He faces a third and eight. Inside five minutes to go. Brock with time. It is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Arizona State will get it with less than five minutes to play. Tipped by Aubrey Battle, the defensive tackle. I'm just not sure who he's trying to get the ball to. It's almost lucky the ball was tipped and went incomplete because it looked as though Heward was throwing into a crowd of people, although it's hard to tell. Battle making a good play, getting his arm up. See, he was getting blocked out of the play, trying to get the ball to Gerald Harris, who was right in between two defenders. Well, don't go anywhere because J.R. Redman brought it back 65 yards, although a penalty brought that one back. Here goes J.R. from the 20. Trying to get to the sideline. Redman. Redman still to the 50. Look at this kid. Unbelievable run by J.R. Redman again. The punter, the last man to get him, Ryan Fleming, finally brings down J.R.
neither one of these football coaches comfortable at all. Not with a 35-31 Washington lead. And Arizona State with the football. Fourth and goal from the eight-yard line. Keeley talked with his offensive coordinator upstairs. He has the new play, and here he goes. Ryan fires. Touchdown! Tarek McDonald! There is a flag down, though. And Bruce Knight is saying, who's it against? State has reclaimed the lead with two minutes to play. Keeley on fourth and goal. He was dealing out an ace. Well, I tell you what, he did deal the ace. They're going to call interference because he's getting held, but what a great catch that was. Even a better throw. <laughs> Keeley again to his old teammate, Terry McDonald. High school teammate they played at St. Mary's High School. Bruce Snyder got them both at the same time. They signed as a team, and they team up again to give Arizona State the lead. Keely to McDonald on a great catch in the end zone. And it's ASU now hoping to stop the Washington comeback. say so that's a huge game in front of about 75,000 in mile high it's cranked up as good as we got it here and Jarzinka takes it about eight yards deep goes right down to one knee so Ryan Keeley hands that football over to Brock Heward but how about Keeley and his delivery to Tarek McDonald how about Ryan Keeley again he wants he buys time in the pocket keeps his feet moving Tarek McDonald with a great catch just a great catch. Take a look at the scoring drive. Nine plays, 20 yards, just 233. And of course, it was set up by the huge punt return of J.R. Redmond. McDonald, what a great catch. We have just seen several brilliant catches tonight. One by Craig Spann, a couple by Dane Looker. There's your timeout situation. Washington has all three. And they've got a great quarterback in Brock Hewitt to lead them, who has already thrown for 239 yards and three touchdowns in this game. Well, it's about time for that. D and fence. They spread them out. Hewitt going downfield, incompleted the 50-yard line. Intended for Reggie Davis' is tight end. We were told sometime in this game they would throw deep to the tight end, and we finally saw it to Reggie Davis. Boy, Reggie Davis had a great opportunity there to come down with a heroic catch. It would have spotted him right at midfield. Brock Hewitt again just putting the ball right on the money. A very catchable ball again. Washington spreading them out entirely, and I'm still surprised Mitchell Friedman has not been involved in any blitzing, and he's playing the deep center field. It does not look like he's coming either. Quick pass to Todd Elstrom. There is a flag back in the offensive backfield, though. That was Elstrom's first catch. He is also from Puyallup High School, where Brock Heward grew up. It is roughing the passer against Arizona State. It comes with 151 left. Did they bring Mitchell Friedman on the play? No. Roughing the passer on a defense at 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. From the end of the run. A huge penalty goes against Bruce Snyder as Washington needs three to tie. And we have to remember those words that Dan Gazetta said. 
First one to 41 wins. And it might be as Skirsky is getting ready. Skirsky's hoping it will just be for a point after touchdown. Hewitt just loops it up and throws it away. Great coverage by Arizona State. Let's go down to Jackie Slater. All right, guys. Defensive coordinator Phil Snow has made an adjustment. That's given him some sex. He has gone to five and six defensive backs right now. He has five defensive backs on the field, two linebackers, and it seems to be working well for him. The coverage is the main thing that he told his defense that they had to have in this drive. Back to you, guys. And they've also gotten good pressure, Jackie, on that quarterback. Here's Hewitt, second and ten. Looker's favorite target goes to the right. And he goes Dane's way, and Dane has the catch. And that will tie a Washington record for most catches in one game set by Jim Craig and Jim Caker. Papers each with 11. And Looker gets jammed in the thigh and has to come out of the game. 11 catches in the night for over 110 yards. Just take a look. Looker comes off the line. Just a quick little slant. He gets hammered by Courtney Jackson. Knocks him out of the game. We've got a timeout on the field. 118 to play. Sun Devils by three. J.R. Redmond has been one of the superstars for Arizona State to give them a 38-35 lead. Dane Looker is hurt. He is out of the game. And here goes Hewitt, and he throws it away. Harris has to cover it, but way back near the 37-yard line. On third down and short, they were trying to sweep the running back to the left side, and the pitch was a bad one. Hewitt just gets pressure from the end. Actually, he didn't even get a lot of pressure. He just flipped it behind Jason Harris. And Eric Flowers, number 36, was really the one that caused the problem. It just puts him in a very long yardage fourth down. Fourth and 17. Hewitt sets up. He has his back for the first down, Reggie Davis. Davis will score the touchdown. Well, that's amazing. These two teams can really bring it. And they've brought it tonight. Brock Heward, fourth and 17, launches, just launches a deep corner route to Reggie Davis. And watch him run. Reggie Davis with a great catch over the shoulder, and he just outruns both Mitchell Friedman and Philip Brown throws himself into the end zone. A huge play for the Huskies. And we're at 41. And now 42. An important 42 because that gives him a four-point lead. The greatest game in Brock Hewitt's history tonight in Tempe, Arizona. Ryan Keeley had the same, the best game in his career. But with 28 seconds left, Brock Hewitt hit Reggie Davis on a fourth and 17 for what might be the game-winning touchdown. Boy, he throws a pretty ball, and I'll tell you, Reggie Davis is a big target as well, but it's amazing that a big man like that, they could free him up and get him down the field. <laughs> you were almost exhausted. And look at some of the veterans are coming out saying, no, guys, no celebration. We're going to get a penalty. We've got to kick off to J.R. Redmond. Giving Looker a hug there. Nice high school team. And they've come a long way together. And now Keeley saying, Do I have one more bullet in my gun? <laughs> With number 21's returning the kickoff, you do. I wouldn't even kick it to him. 
Brock Heward with an amazing comeback. It was two years ago, almost two years ago to the day that Brock Heward led an amazing comeback here in Tempe, Arizona. But in the last seconds, Arizona State would win. And a field goal by Robert Neese. This time, the question is, does Arizona State have enough time? 42 to 38, Washington with a four-point lead. 28 seconds to go. Arizona State pushes the football out past the 45-yard line. It was Lindsey Jackson. Now at 21 seconds left, Dan Cazetta. Just to wonder, does he have enough up his sleeve? He has some speedy receivers in McDonald and Jackson and Kenny Mitchell. Three hundred two yards by Ryan Keeley, his best. Last time he threw for. Close to that many yards was the 281 he had against USC last year. Keeley fires. It is incomplete at the 35 yard line. Big incompletion. Now 15 seconds remain. Six seconds of the clock. And that catch could have been made. Timeout called by Washington. Racing onto the field was Jeff Johnson. They only had 10 men on the field, so Jeff got on there in time and then immediately raced over to the referee and said, Please, time. Well, Arizona State, numb by what that man just did, throwing it 63 yards, and just said, I love you all up in the Pacific Northwest. Courtney Jackson can't believe what he just saw. Reggie Jet Davis, a tight end, coming down his side of the field for 63 yards and the go-ahead score. Well, Keeley just saw magic. Well, I tell you, this is college football. This is this is uh, some good quarterbacks and some wonderful wide receivers. Tom, you quarterback for UCLA. What's going on in the huddle right now at Arizona State? Well, I, I think you're looking at how much time you have. You have two plays, basically. 15 seconds, two timeouts aren't really going to help you. You might be able to squeeze a third play out of it, but you got to stick the ball in the end zone. 54 yards to go. It's not impossible, but you just need a huge chunk of yards right now. Keely back. Pressure's not there. Keeley goes deep. Intercepted. The first interception of this ball game, and Washington just runs out of bounds. Brendan Jones will replace the great Tony Parrish. 82 passes in this game, Tom. And on the 82nd pass, we had our first interception. What an amazing win for Washington. Bruce Snyder saying, wasn't there a penalty thrown? There's a flag on the far side of the field. The referees are trying to straighten it out. Line judge making his case here. Not sure. Jim Lambright's Washington Huskies, a seven-point underdog coming into this game. The 18th rated team in the nation going against the number eight team. I'm not sure if the penalty was before or after the interception. During the pass play, personal foul on the defense. That's 15 yards from the previous spot, and that's an ejection. First down, Arizona State. So ASU still has six seconds. Six seconds in a prayer. Jim Lambright thought he had his first win of 1998, but not so fast. And timeout will be called by Bruce Snyder. Timeout, Arizona State. 
Tom, you have one play. That's it. Well, an eject ejection is not good because your player has to sit out the following game that you're end up playing. But yeah, you, you have one play, and you know it's kind of a big bend. You line up three guys on the one side, and you let it fly. The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer of College Football Saturday is Gary Garcia. Tonight's game was produced by Jerry Romano and directed by Doug Freeman. Directors of field operations are Debbie Kilmartin and Joe Washington. Well, there is Ryan Keeley. He may have heard the name Cordell Stewart. Stewart was the guy who beat Michigan on a prayer a few years back. There is the score by Brock Heward to Reggie Davis that gave Washington the lead. Yeah, Heward to Davis. Huge play moments ago, 21 seconds left. Arizona State takes control and they're moving down the field. Helped out. You got one play here. You line up, you line up three on a side, and you run them down and you hope for the best. You put the ball up in the air and actually they're only going two to one side and Mitchell split out wide to the other. Six seconds left. The last play of the game. Keeley sends it in the air, but only Washington is there. And this game is over in one of the great starts to any college football game. The Washington Huskies survive in just a masterpiece of a game with Arizona State. 42 to 38. Tom, what an incredible game. And an incredible show for both quarterbacks, Brock Heward, that man, and Ryan Keeley of Arizona State. Well, we saw two special quarterbacks tonight. Brock Heward really showed poise, great poise, great leadership throughout the game. Ryan Keeley, of course, a great game, a career game in and of itself. And, and I tell you, two great teams, two great programs. Washington with the victory. Right now, let's go down to Jackie Slater. All right, Coach Lambright, congratulations. Did you ever have any doubt that you could pull this game out? <laughs> what, a, what a thrilling opener. Uh, to, to beat a team like Arizona State in their backyard is, a, is, is great. I couldn't be happier for our team. Talk about your young quarterback, Brock Hewitt. Is he something special or what? Uh, he's pretty good, and so is Reggie Davis with that key catch. Well, it was a big play. Thanks a lot, guys, and back to you up there in the studio. Good job, Coach. Well, there's the guy that got it done, Brock Heward, 27 of 47, 318 yards and four touchdowns and a big hug from his head coach. So that's it from Sun Devil Stadium where the final score is 42 to 38, Washington.